In this episode of Go Fast Brett, we're going to explain air density and power. So we all know that your car goes faster on a cold night than it does on a hot day. But why does this happen? It's all to do with air density. So we're going to take a look at the things that affect air density and how they can help you go faster. Air density is basically the amount of air molecules that you can fit in a certain volume. Now because air contains oxygen, that's the bit we're interested in. So denser air contains more oxygen for a given volume. More oxygen means you can put more fuel in, you get a bigger bang and you go faster. So let's do a real world example of a Suzuki Hayabusa engine, which is a 1.3 litre engine, makes good power, about 147 kilowatts. Hi Brett. It also happens to I be... I your engine in here. Oh, thanks mate. This is your engine. There you go. As you were. It's, uh, it's also a great coincidence that 1.3 litres happens to be pretty much what we have here in these bottles. So, four cylinder engine, 1.3 litre displacement, I think it's a great engine to use for an example. Now, where I'm standing right now, the air density is about 1.225 kilograms per cubic metre. So inside these bottles right now, because of the air pressure, we have about 1.5 grams of air in my engine. So now I've got my Suzuki Hayabusa engine, 1.3 litres. We have about 1.5 grams of air in each cylinder as it's going, and it makes about 147 kilowatts under these conditions. But let's screw up the air density and see what happens to the power. So I'm going to heat the air up, I'm not actually going to do it, but let's just imagine we heat the air up in these bottles to uh, add 20 degrees, let's say. What that's going to do is make the air less dense. So the actual amount of air that we now have in the bottles is 1.41 grams. So we've actually lost about 6% of the air density. So that means we're down on power by about 6% or around about nine kilowatts. Now that is quite a lot of power just for a 20 degree temperature rise. Now likewise, if we were to take that bike, go up in elevation, we'll go say 1,000 metres in elevation. Now the air pressure, even if it's the same temperature as it was at sea level, the air pressure has dropped by about 10%. So we're losing power because there's less air pressure and therefore less density filling our cylinders. For example, if we wanted to correct that with temperature, you would have to go down to about minus eight degrees because the colder air would make the air denser again. So at 1,000 metres, the air temperature would be, need to be about minus eight degrees centigrade to get back to the same density that we had at sea level. Now, keep in mind, throughout all of these examples, the volume, the amount of volume that the engine consumes hasn't changed. It's the amount of air inside that volume. So basically, the hotter the air is, the less dense it is. The higher in altitude you go, the less atmospheric pressure there is to fill the cylinders and the less dense the air is. So the things on your engine that can affect the density getting into the cylinders are obviously pressure and temperature. Now let's say the atmospheric pressure is good, it's, uh, we're at sea level and we have about one bar of pressure. However, if the intake in your car, the filter assembly and all that are restrictive, when you're at full throttle you might actually only be getting say 0.95 bar of pressure by the time you get to the cylinders. So things that you can do to your car to help make sure you get the maximum density and best cylinder filling is make sure the intake is as unrestrictive as possible and a well-designed intake will also make sure that you don't pick up heat from the engine bay. So by keeping it as cool as possible and with as little restriction by the time you get to the engine, you'll make the most of the amount of air density that you actually have surrounding you. So while you can't control the atmospheric conditions surrounding your car, you can optimise it to make sure that it makes the best use of the existing conditions.